Hey gang, welcome to another episode of Duvall's Collection Expansion Extravaganza right here on ToyWoodOrder.com, hosted by me and Carrie Duvall. Hello. There's a dog down below Get us. our dog. He's crying. Hold on. And Chase Duvall. Yeah. Oh. Our oldest. Hi. Our oldest little Shih Tzu. Yeah. How you doing there, buddy? Good? Now this show, of course, is all about the stuff that we find at garage sales, antique malls, uh, auctions, flea markets, and so much more. Uh, and it's a way for us to share our finds. Um, you know, a lot of people do find videos where they just show everything they found in a weekend, whereas we like to show you and give you a little information on some of this stuff. Um, tell you some stories about it. Of course, that's always the best stuff. I'm going to put you down now, so stop, stop whining. Go over there. Go that way. On this show, we've got some cool stuff. We've got some very interesting stuff for you. Uh, let's start out. We'll start out with some action figures this round. Um, I found some. Uh, I've only got a few here, but uh, some stuff that some loose figures that I found. Of course, one of them is from the uh, the Kenner line uh, for Aliens, and uh, I found me a, a gorilla alien. He's got squirting head. So you can fill his head up with water, and he squirts. Neat. He's got, yeah. Let me see. Yeah. Oh, neat. Yeah. So he. Is that from the first movie? This actually is not from the movies. Uh, the Kinner line was actually based on an animated series that only got a pilot made and then never shown. And it's one Wait, of those... Wait, an animated series about aliens? Yep. Scary aliens? Yep. That, well, if you think about it, though, that was kind of the thing for... That's scary looking to me. Yes. That would scare me. Yeah. For was the. It... For the animated 80s. show for adults? No, it was an animated kids show. If you think about it, in the 80s and 90s, there were so many R-rated films that well, got kids toy and yeah, show treatments. Uh, Robocop, Robocop. Ghost, or Robocop, Rambo, um, you know, Yeah, aliens. but those weren't scary, were they? This is scary. They were rated R. They were rated R films. Wow, Police Academy crazy. is another big one that got, you know, toys in a cartoon made from a rated R film. So this came out before the movies even came out? No, no, no. Oh. No, this was... this. These figures came out in the late, uh, the early 90s. Oh, okay. Was when these toys came out. And there were a whole bunch of them. But the Gorilla Alien was always one of my favorites because he could he could just, like, grab a, grab another toy. Rah, 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 yeah, rah. He could, so, like, squeeze their neck. Yeah. The Stunning. only thing, his tail's got, like, this. He's he's one of the only aliens that has, like, a hand on his tail for kind of like the prehensile mm -hmm. tail. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, I've been buying some of the Kidder Alien stuff off and on when I see it loose. Um, this, of course, he doesn't have. They all came with little chest bursters. Um, he did not have his chest burster. But, again, um, he's in really good shape, and I'm not going to pass up a loose Kinder toy. So, what are you going to say, right? Yeah. Raw. Next one up was actually, I believe, this is one of the um, Beast Wars Transmetals. And I found the Optimus Primal from that line. And, of course... Uh, I have Optimus a, Primal? Optimus Primal. Okay. He was, uh, in that series, he was, uh, it was a different Optimus Prime. It was Optimus Primal. And he was, uh, when they landed on Earth, they landed on Earth um, while the original Autobots were still on Earth and sleeping within the Ark ship that they had crash landed on. Autobots and Decepticons. So the, there were the uh, the Maximals, which were the okay. good guys. Um, I can't remember the, the bad guys' names for the life of me, but I remember the Maximals. Um, but I found him at a indoor flea market up near Chicago and thought, well, he's, I think all he's missing, and he had a weapon he came with, but he's still all here, um, and the chrome and stuff is still in really nice shape, the, or not really the chrome, but the, the overlays, and I think I paid a buck for him. Um, he's even got like a little rub sign back here on his back that shows off, uh, see, he's a maximal, see, a little, oh, rub, I sign? See. A little rub sign right there. Um, uh, fun little toys though, and, uh, just another transformer to add to the transformer. Uh, section shelf. that's yeah they have their entire entire four they do shelf thing going on they so. do and i just keep finding more of them so much to my dismay every time i find them carrie's like you are not buying another transformer and i'm like oh yes i am i am I buying another the, transformer well, part of it is like how many did they make oh lots like do you not have them all already? oh no <laughs> not at all not in the least 
<sighs> uh, so yeah, a little uh, transmetal thumpimus. And if I'm wrong, someone please correct me. But uh, pretty sure that's what this one was from. So, yay, Transformers. Transformers. More Look. than meets the eye. Look, I got some more. Let's move on to another action figure. This one's actually fun because it's actually a... People know that I love He-Man, but I'm not a huge He-Man collector. Um, you know, I had started to buy the Masters Universe Classics when they came out. Uh, at one point, you know, during that whole drama of um, of them being out and everything, uh, you know, Carrie and I were kind of, uh, we were paying for two houses, uh, so I could no longer buy them. Uh, and when it got to about $40 a figure, I was like, mm, no, no more. Uh, so I'd stopped. I missed a bunch of them. You know, I haven't bought an actual figure from Maddie Collector in probably two and a half years. Um, sold off a bunch of my classics to people who would better use them, and I kept some yeah. that I liked. Um, but when I find vintage He-Man, actual vintage Masters figures in the wild, for a good price, I buy them. And one that I found that actually, I didn't actually find him, um, he was actually in a lot of stuff that we bought at an auction, um, was this vintage uh, Rattler yeah, figure. Yeah, wasn't he in like a Happy Meal tub? Yeah, he was in a Happy Meal tub. In there, yeah. He was just sitting in there. Was this... Again, you never know. I know. Always dig through stuff like that. Cause... He's a little dirty and he's got some paint gone wait, from wait, his what, teeth. Wait, what did he just do? If you, well, see, he rattles, oh, rattles so he gotcha. rattles, but if it. press the button on his back, and oh, his head God. springs out. Okay, that's creepy. Yeah, and he can still, of course, turn his head, his arms. Um, of course, See? it's one of the one of the Snake Men figures from the Vintage Masters yeah, is line. Is he missing something? Um, just his weapon. But the weapons aren't that so, hard. I know. The weapons just, are not that hard to come by and, for these figures. And I understand that loose figures, it's hard to get all the pieces to them, but it's like every time. It's well, that's why I use my good friend Brent Scrano. If you want to visit Brent's store. You can follow the link down here at the bottom. Um, go check it out on BlueJay.com, uh, as Brent always has a ton of loose weapons and figures. Um, and it's a great spot to stop and stop. I shop there all the time for loose weapons, and he's always sending me, hey, do you need these? And I'm always sending him lists go, hey, look out for these. And now, he, where's he find them? How come we can't find them? Brent's been doing this for a long time, mm -hmm. and he literally goes out of his way to buy nothing but lots of, of weapons. Uh, okay, gotcha. Because he turns around and sells them, right. so... Smart move there, Mr. Scrum. Uh, good buddy of mine, though. So check him out. Follow the link down here at the bottom. Check out Brent's store. Um, tell him Duvall sent you. You might get a discount. You never know. I'm not saying you will. I don't but know. Knowing you, if they say they know you, maybe he'll charge you more. That could be. You might get charged <laughs> more. But, uh, yeah, Vintage Rattler from uh, the Master Universe line from Mattel. Very cool stuff. Let's, uh, let's move on. Let's take a look at some of Carrie's Disney Yay, stuff. Yay, my turn. Bye. Get. Oh, my God. Okay, here's the Goofy. And here's another one. <laughs> Would you calm down? <laughs> This Goofy, you got the Disney, okay. Yeah. This Goofy, we're not really sure. I think that it's a Knickerbocker Goofy, probably from the 60s. Um, he's very dirty. He needs cleaned up a little bit, but um, just a very cute stuffed Goofy, another one that Carrie did not have. And she always asks me, like with the Transformers, don't you have them all? Don't you have all the Goofies yet? I guess not. Well, they make different sizes, different stuffing, this different argu outfits. This, this argument sounds very familiar to me. <laughs> oh my God. Can we go back to before I knew you and I could just go back to not, not having caring all this stuff? or knowing the stuff? I get it. I get it. Yeah, okay. I understand. I understand. <laughs> I get it. But same thing with the Transformers. They have different. That's right. I get it. I know. But, but my toys, I, stuffed animals, I usually only pay a quarter or 50 cents for. That's true. Um, depending on what it is, maybe a little bit more. But yeah. I like him. He's yeah, cute. Look at him. He's a cute. He's cute, uh, cute stuffed goofy. Um, and just another one to add to Carrie's uh, yeah, Growing Goofy collection. I have a collection. little shelf in my office that I... We need to buy a new shelf because that shelf has been overrun with Goofy. We need to add yeah, more shelves. Yeah, so... Um, very that? cute, though, yeah. And this little tiny thing here. This little guy, in the 50s, um, there was a group, uh, there was a little a group of these little figurines. They're called Disneykins. There were a butt-ton of these figures. Um, I think that you actually bought them single like this they you know you'll look on ebay you'll find displays that have all of them I, together yeah i'm i'm wondering if probably should do more research on this stuff before we do a show but if people weren't like a member of something and they got one mailed to them no like it's no, no it wasn't like that no? no these were these were sold in like drugstores oh, um i can't remember I the company that. who did oh, disney kins but they did other figures that weren't disney they did like little soldiers like this and that not these are really really collectible because they're very hard to find they are hard to find. we found um, this in like a tub of stuff just a tub we? of stuff um, they are hand painted, um, and you can tell they are hand painted because yeah, they're not hard. painted well at all. Yeah, and yeah. Um, they're not uh, whoever. He's not the best looking Goofy that we no. own, but in like some of the paints chipping. But... Yeah, but these little guys—they're made out of uh, 
just like a hard plastic. Um, they, you find them a lot of times in the wild broke. You'll find pieces gone, arms gone, heads gone. Um, they are kind of difficult to find in any shape whatsoever, which is why they usually command quite a bit of money mm -hmm. on eBay and on other marketplaces. So I don't think we even knew that was in the tub of stuff we bought. No, we, we did got not. Home and started digging, and I was like, hey, we sorted look. through, and it's like there's a goofy Disney kid in here. I'll be dang. And again, this is something that people probably throw in a tub of stuff, not realizing that it's they not just realizing think it's a little what it toy. is. It's yeah. just a little toy, you know. So yeah, if you Google Disneykins. Uh, you'll see that there were a have, butt ton of yeah, them. Yeah, I would love to have a whole like, set uh, of them. But. Yeah, they did all kind of Mickey, Minnie, Goofy, Donald, yeah. Peter Pan, uh, Lady and the Tramp, uh, Dumbo, just tons and tons yeah, of Yeah, the, of the uh, yeah, look, the paint, like they painted his hand. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did, they were not, they just, they were <laughs> rushing through painting these figures to get them done, to get them shipped, so. Uh, very cute little figure, though. And we've got another one, this actually, uh, from a company called Dakin, that actually made a lot of, large scale vinyl Disney figures that were movable. They did some stuffed animals, but they're they're most known for their collectible licensed vinyl figures, Mickey, Bugs Bunny, uh, you know, stuff like that. This actually, they did a bunch of uh, mini Disneykins, and this actually is one of them. Um, I can't remember what year this was. This is probably, this is probably 70s, I'd say, but it's just a mini Disneykin Mickey. With a movable head and his hands, so he looks like he's uh, looks like he's doing the Macarena. I'm not gonna say you can nick Macarena. Uh, um, we, have, we have a couple. I think we have a Donald. We have a Donald Disneykin. Uh, we have a large. We have a Dumbo Disneykin. Um, a mini Disneykin. Um, the Dumbo I've had for years. Okay, that's why yep. I'm not. It's not yep. ringing a bell. But they're you know they you know their heads were soft rubber. The bodies Wait, it's were not hard a Disneykin. You keep calling it Disneykin. Or a Disneykin. I'm sorry. Dakin. Dakin. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Getting my D's mixed Disney up. Disneykin. Dakin. Okay. Disneykin. Dakin. Okay. 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 Dakin. I've got a Dumbo Dakin mini. Uh, we've got a Donald. This little mini goof. Uh, this little mini goofy. God <laughs> dang it. This little mini Mickey will be added to the collection. And he's a very fine collection. It was something that we came across. I think he might have, might have been, been a Happy Meal stuff too. Might have been, yeah. Uh, that we were uh, like, oh, yeah, there's again, a Not Dakin something Mickey that we usually there. seek out. It's no. just if they're mixing with other stuff. and Yeah. So, yeah. Let's move on before we get to stuffed animals. Let's show off some of this other stuff. Okay. Um, we've talked about uh, the estate sale we went to in St. Louis uh, quite a few off, uh, quite a few off, quite a few off from times, uh, quite a few times. Um, we've talked about the um, amount of amazing stuff that came out of that estate sale that we found. You know, you know, I don't know how many Disney, uh, how many Happy Meal oh, toys, four hundred plus Happy Meal toys, and we didn't bring that many home, but that's. I think we came home with like over a hundred. Over a hundred yeah. and just, just a ridiculous amount of stuff. Um, one of the things we saw in there was they had sheet sets. Um, and the sheet sets are pretty interesting because the sheet sets are actually, this was a, a fitted sheet. I don't know what we're we going to do with these. We'll fit our bed. We'll no, but this actually, out. I don't know if you can see it. This actually is the, uh, are they upside down there? They uh, are. Yeah. We'll turn just it around. Turn, there you go. This is actually the, uh, the twin size fitted sheet set for the yeah. real Ghostbusters. How cool is that? So, we've, never seen we've never seen this stuff. Uh -uh, not sheet sets anywhere. Um, so we picked up this sheet set for Let's them. See, it says 1980, well, 84, 84 86. So, yeah, this fitted sheet set for the Real Ghostbusters cartoon series. That was kind of funny to, to find. And um, we had seen these in the pictures, and I was like, well, they've got a bunch of licensed sheet sets. I'm like, I don't know if it's something that I really want to start buying, but if it's if they're cheap. Yeah, because I don't know how we're going to display it or anything like that. No Maybe. idea yet. So I was like, well, we'll buy that. You know, we'll, we'll buy some of those. Those are kind of cool. And then the other one we found, I don't know if we haven't actually taken this one out of the bag yet. This was, uh, oh, this might be, uh, oh, this is actually a curtain, I think. Oh, ah, it is. Well, look at it. We didn't, we just now figured that out. We didn't this know. This is a, a Wuzzles curtain. Oh my God. We're putting this in our bedroom. Uh, this will fit in our bedroom, won't it? How funny is that? Yeah, for some reason. Oh, it's, that's well, weird. They're, it's supposed to be like that. It's like a crinkle. It's like a... Oh, is I, don't it? Know. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. But anyways, I don't know if that is a curtain. I don't know what that is. That's. I think it's supposed to be. They got a hole to put. Well, maybe not. No, there's no hole to put anything in there. <laughs> we don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. It's a sheet, but they added a crinkle to a thing. I don't know. But there's no spot here to put a curtain rod. Uh uh. Shower curtain? No. No, it's not that. It looks like they. They. What the they heck? They sewed this. What is it? At one time, it was just a sheet. Well. We'll figure something out. And now out. they've they've done this to it. I wish it was a curtain. Yeah, it'd be cute if it was a curtain. All right, well. But it's just so, a wuzzle, huh. piece of wuzzle, wuzzle fabric there that's well, pretty cute. 
Uh, I guess advice to people is maybe look at what you're buying <laughs> before you buy it. No. I thought it was in with these other sheets, so I just thought it was a sheet. Huh. Well, at least they're well taken care of. They're clean. Yeah. Thank God. Because if I'd have just done that and smelled throw up or something or pee, I'd have been like, oh! Or smoke. Smoke is a lot of, huh. a lot of problems well, sometimes. We'll have to figure out what we're going to do with yeah, that, too. Yeah, figure out what we're going to do with that. I'll take it. Pretty cool. I mean, pretty interesting little stuff that we find that license like that. You know, if we find it, we're going to buy it. And that was just too cool and weird to leave there. Yeah. So, uh, I got a couple books to show you. This first one, actually, I got a couple of these. Um, one is from Panini, one is from Diamond. Anyone remembers in the 80s and 90s, there were. Uh, you could go into any grocery store and find a ton of uh, sticker books and sticker packs based on films, based on classic movies. One of the ones I found was the uh, the Willow sticker album from the 80s. And this one actually had some uh, some Willow stickers in it. Here, just these little, they were just these little, you can buy these little packs of, of stickers. And of course you had to buy a ton of them to get them all. Right, I, re I remember these. Yep. Let me put these back under the paper clip here. Uh, but the artwork in these are really cool. I mean, you know, open it up and the first page is this really great pen. I'm not a fan of this movie. Is that Willow? No. Is that? No. The artwork that in here, no. The artwork in here is, you know, it's all hand-drawn artwork and you had spaces. They, there are some, you know, there were some of the stickers have been put in here, but they were... It looks like the stickers make a scene or something. 240 stickers is what Jeez. you need to complete this book. And of course you could order them. Um, this, these were really big overseas, Great Britain, Italy... Um, Australia, you know, in Canada and the United States, they were pretty good, but they were mostly created and done in Italy. Uh, I believe Panini was an Italy company, Italian company. Um, very cool though. They were a big, big deal back in the eighties. And of course the other one I found was the, uh, from Diamond, uh, was for Diamond Sticker Club was the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles sticker activity book, um, that actually is in 3D, old classic red and green really? 3D. Yep. It's got a pair of little, uh, oh back gosh. here, it's got a pair of, uh, a couple pairs of that? red and blue 3D glasses. Um, this one had 180 stickers to finish off the sticker the book. The fact that you found that and nobody's pulled any of this out or used it is kind yeah. of neat. Yeah. Um, so, you know. So now do we have to find all the stickers? No, no, okay. no. Trying to find stickers for these albums, you can find them on eBay a lot of times. You can find people selling packets of stickers, but they usually want like five or six bucks a packet. Um, so I'm not going to no. go out of my way to find packets, the, 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 all the stickers for these. But um, they're just fun, unique collectible items to add to the collection over there, you know, and the kids book stuff. So found those. Those are very cool. This was actually uh, at a, we found this uh, at a garage sale and this was kind of fun because this actually was the uh, incredible crash dummies. Uh, this was like a little giveaway amusement park activity center and coloring book that you would get um, from Sitco. Uh, from the gas station. Oh, yeah, this so you're was, on a road trip and you need something for yeah, kids Yeah, you would go into Sitco and know. you would find these. These were licensed from Tyco. Of course, they they show off the uh, the incredible crash test dummies from Tyco. Oops. Right, right. Yeah, some of the pages are coming out of the the book, and that's okay. That happens. Um, there's some uh, some coupons back here for old Tyco product, um, as well as uh, like mm -hmm. a Sitco oil recycling kit, and you know some stuff for some vacations and. Um, Kind of a cute little book, though, for Incredible Crash Test Dummies, which was an odd toy line in the 90s that started out as, um, oh, God, what were their names? Larry and uh, the, the those, they were the Incredible Crash Test Dummies. And then the uh, Department of Safety and Transportation decided to stop licensing them for Tyco for the toys and the cartoons. So Tyco just kept the design and renamed the characters. Uh, so the, the characters in this, like Spin and Slick, are different characters than mm. uh, than the original incredible crash test i mean so a lot, of, cool. uh, a lot of things for the kids to do in here yeah Word a lot search. of activities and comics and um a find them and all kinds of stuff so um very cool little book last book i got for you is actually something that i didn't know existed that i had never found i'm not sure who who printed this berkeley books it out of new york but i found a uh back to hardback back to the future storybook uh which was a weekly reader book yeah Okay, for a second, that did not look like Michael J. Fox. Yeah, it's... It is. It's the poster at work, but it's, you know, it's the full... Would you say full, Weekly Reader? It was from a Weekly Reader. Oh. And it was, of course, the, the storybook. It's got pictures from the film, uh, the story in words, of course. Um, you know, I, I love finding Back to the Future stuff, because you never really know what they licensed, what they made. Uh, but it's this is kind of a, a fun fun book with a lot of great pictures from the film on it. The fact that it's hardback makes it even even better to me. 
Um, you know, pictures on the back from the part of the finale of Back to the Future. Um, like, I'm a big Back to the Future fan. I love this film. It's one of my favorite film trilogies of all time. You're currently reading a paperback right now. I am. You? I'm actually reading the paperback, uh, the Back to the Future, the actual first film paperback, because I have the other two. I love reading the paperback novelizations, because nine times out of ten, they're based off an early version of the script, and they're completely different, and a lot of times it's fun to read. And the one for this one is really unique, so... Um, very cool book, though, for to add to the collection and uh, a licensed Back to the Future item. Let's move on. We've got, uh, we've got a couple of uh, unique stuffed animals, uh, and then we'll move on to a couple board games. We got a couple of things here. Uh, some are from McDonald's, of course. They go, kind of go along with our Happy Meal collection. Um, I've had one of these for a long time. I had a Lola Bunny, and these were based off Space Jam uh, from the 90s, the movie with the Looney Tunes characters, Michael Jordan. I had a Lola Bunny for a long, you know, that was the only one I ever bought. Uh, but we uh, shop Goodwill.com, which is a fun place to kind of poke around to see what they've got auction style that they're selling. Uh, they, they get a lot of good stuff. We've talked about it before on episodes of Married to the Collection. Yes. Goodwill gets a lot of good stuff. Yes, shop Goodwill.com has a ton yeah. of stuff that they get that's so. really good. Uh, but these we found in an auction in the night one was uh, a couple of the other Space Jam figures. So we've got uh, we've got Taz. Just kind of neat. We'll open him up here. So you've got Taz and his tunes uh, and his uh, his Toon Stars uh, jersey there. Taz. He's pretty cute. I like Taz. You should do voiceover. No, not at all. Uh, these were fun. These were uh, these were sold separately. They weren't Happy Meal toys. Okay, that's what I was going to yep. ask you yep. next. These uh, you had to purchase these. They had a whole collection of them. Uh, but Not well, they had Bugs, Daffy. Bugs. No, they had Bugs, Daffy, Lola, Taz, and a few of the monsters okay. and a few of the villains. Okay. So there's Taz. We also picked up uh, Daffy from the same line out of that auction, which was kind of cool. And these are just wonderful little plush, you know, plush uh, Looney Tunes characters. So we got Daffy, Daffy and Taz to go along with our Lola. Um, maybe eventually we know a couple places we can find a bug, so we'll get a Bugs. Well, yeah, we've seen Bugs a few times yeah. out in the auction at a, yeah, sorry, so antique malls. Fufferinth. Well, that's Sylvester, but kind of the same idea. Um, you're despicable. So. But we weren't looking for these. We no. ended up with these because of these other two. Here. We ended up with these two. Because they were in the auction yes, with two. These. Get these. We've talked about these before. We showed off a Fozzie. These were actually Canadian McDonald's exclusives in the 90s, um, where Kermit, Piggy, Fozzie, Animal were all dressed in hockey gear with hockey sticks. Um, they're hard to find in the States. You had Kermit already. I had Kermit. I bought him from a Canadian McDonald's when I went there in the 90s when these were out. Uh, I bought Fozzie from Dave Draper, um, and then we, you know, our good buddy Yoda Soup had... Piggy and Kermit at one time that he was going to send us, but they're missing their sticks. So we were like, no, you know, keep them. We want the sticks, you know. Um, we'll keep an eye out. Well, we found them on ShopGoodwill.com, and sure enough, still sealed with the sticks. And then they came with the Space Jam. And so they came with the Space Jam. So it was just, they yeah. were all together, won the auction for like 10 bucks, um, and got them sent here to the house. Um, but yeah, like I said, these are very hard to find in the States. Um, they're very well done stuffed animals. They've got... <laughs> Give them to me. they got hard plastic heads. Oh my god, he's so cute. And of course, they had hockey sticks uh, that could fit put onto their arms that they could hold, kind of. Oh my god, he is adorable. <laughs> the, the Jim Henson, the... I love animal. The copyrights on here. Piggy. Cute little piggy with her yeah. helmet on and her mm -hmm. hockey stick. I love it. <laughs> these, are, uh, these are very... For, for Muppet collectors, these are very interesting collectibles. Because like I said... Only available in Canadian McDonald's, 95. Um, you can find them on eBay a lot. You can find we, them on eBay we see a lot, them on eBay all the time, but like one of them is usually 10 bucks or more. And we, so. Yeah, so, but to get them, this completes our our yeah. Muppets NHL figures. So we now have all four of these, and uh, these are very cool. Yeah. Uh, if you're a Muppet fan and you're looking for something fun to collect that's unique, these are it right here. Uh, but yeah, again, hard, hard yeah, plastic yeah. heads, soft, soft plush bodies. Um, so how much were these when you bought them? Since I think they, they were the two ninety nine a piece. Really, that's mm -hmm. it? Yeah, they were pretty pretty wow. cheap. Wow, yeah. Yeah, they were pretty affordable. Huh. So, Neat. and of course they range anywhere from five to ten bucks a piece. Yeah. Uh, sometimes fifteen or twenty, depending on who it is. So, yeah. very cool though. 
One more thing before we get to some uh, board games here. This actually is pretty cool. This actually is going to get open. But uh, we were at the Pink Elephant, which is an antique store uh, near St. Louis, Missouri. It's a very large antique store. It's very huge. It's uh, two levels, uh, three levels, actually. Yeah. Four, if you th think about it, because they've got a stage, they've got a main floor, they've got a basement, and upstairs. Mm -hmm. So technically a four-level antique store. Uh, we always usually, we try to stop there about once every five or six months, just to kind of poke around. The items in there don't change around very often, but when they do, we find right. some really good stuff. And this time, it was myself, Carrie, and Dave Draper. Uh, we found some very interesting things. One of them I found was this boxed Rainbow Bright Murky Dismal, who, as you can see the plastic, I put my finger in here. Um, and for those of you that can see, and I'll, you'll be able to see from the pictures that his lightning bolt is actually missing off his, off his chest, but it is in here. Um, it has simply fallen off the fabric, which means I need to get some fabric glue and, and connect it. But when you find Murky, he's always missing the little lightning bolt that goes on his chest. Um, usually that's one of the first pieces to go because they was just simply glued on there. Um, I think I paid what $18 for yeah. this and it's still sealed. Um, although like I said, it is, I am going to open it, um, uh, because I am going to display him because there's no point in displaying him no. in the box because the right. box is just really beat up. I'll keep the box, but, um, you know, I'm going to display him up with my <laughs> rainbow bright. Um, this finishes off my villains for the series. I had murky, uh, I had lurky and now I have murky dismal. Um, but he comes with, you know, he had a little bag that had uh, that's got a little cloud in it that he carries around that a clouds like a little storm cloud with a lightning bolt that he can carry around and he's got a little storybook that he came with in here uh, these are great you know from Mattel in the 80s uh, rainbow bread is not a line that I'm actively collecting but the fact that I have a complete rainbow with a twink I have a starlight I have murky lurky I have uh, patio green little lucky sprite or little green but sprite not, but, not her. but not the other dolls and there's not a whole lot of the dolls out there these size so i've got a good chunk of them that are actually the more expensive ones finding the rest of them just a matter of either buying them off ebay for a good price or just waiting and finding them somewhere else at a show or something uh king county toy show toy and doll show for instance that's a good place to find these so uh very cool though for you know less than 20 bucks uh, when i saw the price tag i usually we don't spend that much money on a item at an antique not store normally, but, no. but something of this nature i was like oh i'm buying that because i'm not going to find it for that price again even even with the box speed up not going to happen so very cool item to add to the collection and something like i said it's going to get open so yeah. very cool let's uh let's wrap this up with uh with some board games like we always like to do here on the show and we'll uh, we'll wrap the episode up and you guys can uh, get on with your day huh huh no want to hang out with us more I got a whole stack of board games. We could do those for an hour, people. We're only going to do two this time, though. So we'll be right back with some board games. All right, finish the episode up. We've got some great board games. This one comes from Milton Bradley, uh, ages 8 to 15. It's an odd age range for this. Usually it'd be ages 8 to everyone or something, but ages 8 to 15. Uh, based oh, on. You can't play it. Why not? Because. Because why? You are more than two times. Too oh, I am. This. Crap. <laughs> Way too old for this game. This is actually uh, The Amazing Spider-Man and the Fantastic Four. Uh, it's actually called The Amazing Spider-Man Game with the Fantastic Four. Uh, very neat little game from the, I think this is 70, 77, year I was born, this came out. Uh, the game board's kind of neat because it's, uh, <laughs> it's got some classic... Uh, web. Yeah, it's got some classic Marvel Comics artwork there. Very simple game. You've got, you know, you've got a place for villain cards to go. Um... Of course, you've got you've got your villain cards, which are just simple. Uh, they they really they literally say Spider-Man villain card, and on the back they have the villain, which is Prowler, uh, Green Goblin, Shooter, Mysterio, Slugger, you know, Ringmaster. It's kind of funny. You've got these uh, Spider-Man travel cards, which are how you move in the game. So it's like move three spaces, move both pieces two spaces, move one space, and then you've got uh, you've got all of your very, you know, there's two of each color here. There's a red, a blue, a green, and a yellow. Pawns, and I think each player can, controls two pawns. Mm -hmm. And then you've got all of these, uh, these S's. Which are kind of funny. Uh, uh, they're used in the game. I don't know what they're used for. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Capture villain, special moves. Uh, I don't know what they're for. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. We haven't really read the directions for some of these. So, um, some very interesting items to this game, though. But the board, the board's gorgeous. I love the artwork on the board. It's so simple and so neat. Um, you know, 
we've talked about before if we weren't you know these are the kinds of things that you would just like hunt down the boards for and frame the boards and make this great display of framed boards from classic board games or do great shadow boxes of these classic board games that'd be kind it's of it's when you capture a villain you put one of the s's on that spot oh uh, see that's how that works yeah uh, very cool game i think we paid like 10 bucks for it uh, but this is another one I've seen before at shows, out at flea markets, somebody asking 40 50 bucks for this game. Um, it is kind of a semi-hard-to-find game. Uh, and, of course, it, it's another one of those games that spans different collectors. Um, right. Marvel you, Comics, yeah. comic book collectors, Spider-Man collectors, superhero collectors, board game collectors. Right. Um, a lot of different collectors collect this game, which makes it that much harder to find at times. But very cool. The Mansion Spider-Man with the uh, Fantastic Four game. One more board game here for you to wrap things up. This one's kind of neat. We talked about it in the last episode we did um, about the auction in St. Louis we, or up near Chicago we went to that had board games um, that I won which which from. Uh, this one was uh, kind of interesting. I'd been watching this one on eBay for a while. Uh, I discovered it existed uh, probably a few weeks ago and was like, well, that's, that's a neat idea for a game. Uh, and the game is actually, surprise, surprise, is an ideal game which we've shown a lot of ideal games on this show since we started. They had a lot of... Um... Very unique, very imaginative, yes. very fun games. Right. Uh, very easy to play games that were just a lot of fun. And this is actually the strategy attack game with air raising action, a game called Battleboard. Uh, I love the, the artwork on this. This was, uh, at the time it says patent pending. <laughs> This was, uh, this was 1972 is when this game was made. And of course, just like all the ideal games we bought pretty much today, this still has all the original packaging included in it. Um, we're not going to put the actual battle board up here. I'm going to show you something but first. The, the cool, this, yeah. This was actually unique. The, the game board itself is very cool because they did a very unique idea. Basically, the idea is, is each player has um, these, little, these little player pieces here. Just hand me, yeah. Uh -huh. So you had uh, you had a king and several knights, um, and your goal was to get one of your figures to the wall. But if you were to put each turn, you would move a playing piece, and then you have these plunger devices, which and just which just blow air. The thing is, that your your opponent can't see. Yeah, you so can't they don't see where, know where you're, you're at. Yeah. So they would pick a spot. Yeah, it's battleship with knights on steroids. Yeah. So they would. Uh, let's see, this one's in the. You can take that away. Yeah. Basically, they would pick a spot, and if you're lucky enough, whoops, here, I'll have you hold the uh -huh. other side here. If you're lucky enough, you would put your air plunger in there, and and your piece would literally fly out uh -huh. of the space. Very cool, because the, the bottom of the board, you can see all these air canals they created. Um, and each space on the board acts to the corresponding space on the opposite side where the air comes out. So it's a very... Very unique board game and a very cool idea um, for a board game. Um, and that was the reason why I wanted it because I was like, well, that is really cool. Um, and it's a very simple idea that looks to be a lot of fun. Um, so I have of course, a feeling you and Pixel Dan will enjoy this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, yes. This Trying will to be. Blow each other's things yes, off the board. This, this will be a fun game to play on board in the future um, that I look forward to playing with Pixel Dan on board. Uh, but yeah, I mean, of course, a lot of the games we bought from that auction, the board, the, the, the boxes are just are They're dirty. They're super dirty, yeah. They're dirty and nasty, but that doesn't matter a whole lot because... It's all there. It's all there. And that's all that matters fun. with us. Yeah, it I want to play it with you. Yeah, it does look a lot of fun. Uh, again, though, like we said, Ideal Games. Ideal had so many cool still ideas. In Ideal, no. Ideal okay. is out of business. Uh, they had just so Surprising. many different... Unique ideal, uh, ideal, ideals, ideas. Well, there you go. That's hence the name. Unique ideas for games, and they've made so many over the decades that they were open. Uh, another one we have that I'm looking at that we're going to show eventually is a game called Careful, the Toppling Tower game. That's really cool and unique. Um, that I look forward to showing that one off. But uh, a lot of fun these this this company these games. So uh, there you go, gang. That'll wrap up this episode of Collector Expansion Extravaganza. Collection Expansion Extravaganza. Right here market finds. No. Oh. Right here, hosted. God. This is a great episode, ladies and gentlemen. This is top of my game. I'm on top of it right now. My game, there's me on top right there. 
You can check us out on ToyWorldOrder.com. Lots of great stuff going on over there, such as Married to the Collection podcast, David Duvall's Toys and Collectibles, um, as well as some great reviews. If you're watching this somewhere other than YouTube, go to YouTube.com forward slash ToyWorldOrder. Hit the subscribe button. It helps us out amazingly. Um, helps us to continue to do these great shows. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. You can follow me at Puppet Duvall. You can follow this one at Mrs. Duvall. Uh, and gang, as always, I didn't say it last episode. She actually reminded me I didn't say my catchphrase. Keep digging. Because you never know quite what you're going to find. Take care, gang.